Good morning and welcome to this edition of Greenbow Gathering here at beautiful Greenbow Lake State Resort Park. Our show today is brought to you by Greenup County Tourism, Greenbow Lake State Resort Park, First and People's Bank. And we also want to thank Hank Bond with Greenup Beacon. It's available online live, greenupbeacon.com. Look for the Greenbow Gathering uh, tag in the upper right corner. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. We've got TJ Maynard, head coach of the Raceland Rams uh, football program. A couple other players, Austin Manis and Mac Boggs, are with us today as well. We've got Mark Cole from Hope's Place in Ashland. Uh, Bob Adams from right here at the campground in the marina here at Greenbow Lake State Resort Park. And also Bonnie uh, and Shannon Spears, who are going to be playing some music for us at the end of the show. So stay with us. We'll be right back. First of People's Bank has served customers one at a time since 1932. First of People's Bank, a full-service bank with six convenient locations to serve you. Stop by today and take advantage of the many banking opportunities available at First and People's Bank and Trust, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. And hey, welcome back to Greenbow Gathering here at Greenbow Lake State Resort Park. I'm Bobby Allen along with Carrie Lyle, park manager here at Greenbow. And we'd like to welcome in our first guests now. Uh, we have head coach TJ Maynard. Uh, we've got Austin Manis and Mac Boggs, uh, Raceland Ram football players and their head coach. So thank you guys, appreciate you coming. Thank appreciate you having us. Appreciate well, first and foremost, coach, uh, tell us about what you what you can look forward to this season and, and what you all are doing to prepare. Um, we got one good thing we got, we got a lot of guys back with a lot of experience next year. Uh, we had a, a good season. I think we finished nine and three last year. Uh, did not finish the way we wanted to. Uh, Kind of ended with a sour taste in their mouth, and I think it's kind of been the things kind of motivate these guys all all summer and all winter, and the weight room and our programs. Uh, we got 54 kids on the roster, and pretty much all all summer we've had 47, 46 kids there, so it's been a, it's a really good number to show up and be dedicated to what we're doing. Tell us a little bit about your uh, schedule this year. Uh, changed well, it? Yeah, our schedule's changed quite a bit. Actually, it's got a lot tougher. Uh, we're still going to open up with East Carter. Uh, we got Ashland. We always play them second game. Then we got Boyd County, Greenham County, Lawrence County. Uh, we added two new teams to our schedule this year, which we got, I don't think I'm real smart about, Cove Grove and Ironton. Uh, but at the same time, we want to challenge these young men and get them prepared for our ultimate goal, state championship. So you've got to play good football teams if you want to do that. Uh, so not only are we trying to prepare them this past winter in our weight program, our summer program, uh, but you know during the season with that schedule. Gotcha. All right, I'll start with you, Austin. Right. Tell us about uh, your position that you play, and I also want you to tell me uh, who you think your toughest opponent's going to be this year. Well, I'll play offensive guard and defensive tackle, and uh, pretty much the, the hardest opponent that I think is going to be is Ironton. Yes. Yeah. They're a good school. Absolutely. They always have a good football program. Absolutely. All right, Matt, same with you. Tell us about your position and who you think is going to be your toughest opponent this year. I play a middle linebacker and offensive tackle, and – it doesn't matter who you tell you's a middle linebacker, by the way. No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who you play on the schedule. You got to come out and play hard and play the game that you're in to Good win. Answer. Good answer. So, what do y'all think is uh, the ultimate goal this year? You think uh, you have a state championship run in you? Yeah, absolutely. Good answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, coach I mean, like that. I mean, obviously, you got to set goals high Absolutely. and you try to attain those things. Again, we got a sour taste how it ended last year. Everybody sure. does. So, uh, we all been working hard, and hopefully, uh, when it come, time comes, it's November, December, we'll be ready. Well, I like the schedule change. I, you know, you got to beat the best before you can be the best. So, uh, I, I applaud that. I applaud that schedule because a lot of these teams will go out and play anybody that they can schedule just to get a 10, 12 win season. And yeah, you know, it's not about the wins. You. you know, it, you know, we all want to win, but it's, you know, if your ultimate goal is to win in the playoffs and win sure. championships, you got to play good football Absolutely. teams. And you know, for us, you know, we always, we never back down from anybody. We don't play whoever. And plus, what I like about it is it's local. You know, we don't have to get on a bus and travel a long distance. Plus, it's going to be better for, uh, you know, our area of football. It's going to be better financially for all the schools involved. So, yeah, that's kind of what, what we look at when we schedule is, you know, the competition, you know, the drive. Plus, you know, you know about money financially. Who do you think is going to be the best in-state school uh, that you'll play this coming uh, season? Keep it in the area. Well, know. someone asked me that the other day and asked me, you know, and I was just talking to Margo up here about that, uh, you know, who's the best team in our area? I, I, Hard to tell right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know. Usually, yep. usually there's one team that you can say hey, that's probably the team in the area that's going to have the best season or the best team. I, I don't know if there's one out there right now. Hopefully yep. it's us. Absolutely. Well, sure. sure. I'll tell you one thing, Coach. Refereeing as many years as I have and, and being a fortunate to referee on your field, you all got a class program. Yeah, we sure appreciate and, uh, that. We, we, we always look forward to coming to Raceland. 
and officiating. And like you said, when you play caliber teams and make that playoff atmosphere during the season, it gets you ready for postseason. Yeah, you know, we got great uh, fan support, community support. Uh, we got great uh, support from our school system. And, you know, so it, it, it makes my job a lot easier so I can just concentrate on getting these two guys better and getting better for the season. How many returning uh, players do you have from last year that, that are returning starters? Uh, we'll return nine on offense and anywhere from six to seven on defense. Uh, that's pretty substantial. Too. So, uh, but a lot of guys play. That's that's the thing. We've got, uh, I believe, we've got fourteen seniors on the roster, and all those guys have played all the way through. We got a lot of experience. Uh, Max, a four-year starter. Uh, Austin's a three-year starter. So we got a lot of guys that played a lot of football and got a lot of experience. So. You know, hopefully they can lead some young guys that uh, we got coming up. Our eighth grade group uh, got to the finals of the middle school state championship last year, and they got a lot of talent. So hopefully these guys can bring those guys along to help us develop some depth. What do you think the one thing Raceland has to do this year to, to, to reach their goal well, as a player? Uh, we got to set our goals high, and we can't like play off a team if we don't think they're as good. We have to play through it and treat them like every other person on our schedule. Yeah. We have to play hard and play every week and don't worry about the next week. We have to win the game we're in. Okay. You know, we, we've talked a little bit about off season. Uh, you know, you got to deserve victory. You know, to deserve victory means you got to work at it and you got to prepare during the week. Uh, the Friday night's the fun part, and that usually takes care of itself if you prepare during the week. But if you, again, know that's an opponent you should beat and you kind of psych through and go through the motions and cut corners, well, that's how you're going to play on Friday night. That's when you can get beat. Plus, you know, we always tell our guys we always want to be going forward. We're always going to get better each and every week. So come November, December, you know, we're hitting on all cylinders. So if you, during that week, you know you're playing an opponent that you probably should beat and you slack off, well, you're actually, you know, you're probably still going to win that game. But if your ultimate goal, you're hurting that. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys, uh, like Kerry said, y'all are a, a class program, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, first and foremost, and thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, I sure right. appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Guys. Matt Boggs, thank Coach TJ Mayer, Austin Manis with the Raceland uh, Ram football program. Uh, in a few minutes, we'll have Mark Cole on here from uh, Hope's Place in Ashland, Kentucky. So stay with us on Greenbow Gathering. We'll be right back. Greenbow Gathering here at Greenbow Lake State Resort Park. I'm Bobby Allen along with Kerry Lyle. And it's our pleasure now to welcome in our second guest for today's show, uh, Mark Cole from Hope's Place. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Hey, Mark. Meet you. First and foremost, I, I saw that you're a prevention educator. So having said that, tell us about what Hope's Place does. I think there might be some misconceptions about uh, what they do. So tell us about Hope's Place in general. Great question. Yeah, you know, a host place gets kind of, people get confused in the community of what we actually do. A lot of people believe we're a woman's shelter or, um, even a restaurant or a boutique. Um, we're not any of those things. Actually, what we do um, is actually a very serious, very intense subject is child sexual abuse. And our goal and reason we exist is to take care, care of children. From when a child discloses or comes forward with this, we take it from the very beginning all the way to the end of the investigation. So under one roof, we have doctors, prosecutors, child protective workers, uh, pre prevention educators to educate the public on what's going on and the fact that what we do but you know child sexual abuse is a is a subject that really the community as a whole myself included 
really don't want to talk about. I mean, That's it's true. something like, yeah, let's just put that over in the back burner somewhere. But uh, it's a very, very, very serious, very serious, intense issue in our in this community. And I think that surprised a lot of people because you're right; it is a kind of a taboo subject that nobody wants to talk about. Um, how prevalent is it around here? Is it is it is it more so than we would care to admit? Yeah, you know that's the with me when I started with Host Place that the thing that shocked me the most is like one in four girls and one in six boys are sexually molested by the time they're 18 wow. years old. Wow. And 90 percent of them knew their attacker, they knew who it was, and it's, you know a lot of times it's family members. Now I'm looking at some you know just statistics I don't want to mess them up, but um, you know another shocking statistic is 70 percent of all reported cases in the United States, 70 percent are children. 70 percent, that's 7 out of 10, end up being children. And you know, people say, well, that's national, that's not here. Hope's Place in 2011, over 300 children. In 2012, well over 300 children, and this year we're on pace to beat that, which is not a good thing. No, it's not. You know, it's a shame that we have to exist, but you know, what we do is extremely important because the impacts on society incredible. Um, it's estimated that $35 billion annually is spent on rehab and on child sexual abuse, you know, through court cases and things. And, you know, the impacts on just right here in, you know, green up and Boyd and, and the county, surrounding counties and communities is tremendous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're looking for one cause, because this one cause affects like alcoholism, it affects homelessness, it affects drug abuse, it affects eating disorders, it affects, you know, school work. And if a lot of these children end up act out and the sad part about it is most children never no. never disclose they never say anything about it so if we continue to ignore it what well, you know the impact on our society and our community right here is tremendous and we've got to do something about it so we've got to talk about it sure that's where i come in yeah well you know uh, hopefully this will be a good outlet to to get the ball rolling on that because i think it's an important issue to talk about how are you all funded? Uh, how does the, orga how, the organiz organization run from a business standpoint? Right. You know, it's a, we're appointed through um, Kentucky, the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. We're working on several grants from the state of Kentucky, as well as local resources and local um, funding. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of um, charitable events. We have in April, we have our chocolate extravaganza. And in the fall, we have golf tournaments and a mystery dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so really, you know, any support there from the, from the local people. You know, really, you know, from the local people, we do trainings and um, things like that to make people aware so they can actually spot when an issue is happening. Because kids don't disclose, but there's signs. Sure. And there's things that just the average person can do if they're trained or they, and they know what to look for. So we train a lot of uh, teachers. We train you know, anybody who works with children. And we'll do, we'll do that free anytime. Can you give us some of those signs that you were just talking about that we should be looking for as, a, as, a, as, as people who care? Society, yeah. yeah, you know, a lot of the signs are, um, you know, like, Simple things like bedwetting, some acting out, um, eating disorders. Um, there's a lot, you know, setting fires. There's a lot of little things that, that you know, anytime a child is abused, um, whether it's physical or sexual, you know, these are the kind of signs that you see. A lot of times, there's just no signs at all, which is the worst because a lot of the kids, they internalize it, which there's a lot of psychological damage if they internalize this. And so, really, you know, if one in four and one in six, um, girls and boys respectively are abused on the time they're 18. I mean, think about that. Think about that how, in a in classroom, that's what, 20% yeah. roughly? So in a classroom of, of 20, how many girls are, are actually, or how many boys are molested in our classrooms? So I always say, if, if that was the flu, mm -hmm. if child sexual abuse was the flu, then what would the CDC then <laughs> do? I mean, they would surround this area until we got it under control. You know, and, and the National Guard would come in and, and quarantine this whole area. But right now, these kids are just silently bearing the brunt of being abused, mostly by people they know. What can we do about that? Um, thank you. <laughs> call Hope's Place. Um, you can go on the website. It's uh, hopesplace.org. Um, you can call 325-4737 and just ask, hey, how can I help you? And we get you know, some training. Um, there's things we need to help these children. Um, we do all this. And I want to stop and say, we do all our services, which are forensic interviews, medical exams, um, preparing for court, and everything that we do, we do that free. We do not turn any child down. And the biggest thing we do is counsel these children, because mm -hmm. we know that people who are sexually abused will repeat it. Sure. So you just, you know, if you don't get one here, then they can become one, and, and it just perpetuates itself. 
which is more damage from society. But we know if we get a young child, you know, under 18, we can counsel them, and they can heal, and they can become, you know, a viable part of society and stop yeah. that chain of abuse. Yeah. So call us. Look. There's yeah, plenty. There's plenty to be done. You know, I'm thinking we'd like to have you back on too. Now, now that you know, use this as an outlet to maybe, you know, push some of the the education aspects of it and and, and the learning aspects of it. You know, as a society, and right. uh, we'll have you back on before some of your events, and you can uh, publicize that. Absolutely. Like to, Thank you. We'd like to do our part to get the public involved in what you all are doing. It's a great I think show it's for that. Very important. I, you know, I have a 12 year old daughter, and you know, Carrie has kids too, and and that's those are scary statistics. It is. I'll just be honest with you. That's, yeah. uh, that's shocking. And it's 100 percent preventable. Yeah. Yeah. If we just know what to look for, what to watch for, and to protect our children. Yeah. Because it's yeah. not up to children to protect themselves. Yeah. It's up to us as adults to protect them. Hmm. Well, Mark, we appreciate you coming on, and, uh, and you do great work, no doubt about it. And hopefully, uh, like I said, we can use this as an outlet to, to get your message out there and, and educate the public on what we need to do right here, Thanks. right here at home. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Mark. Mark Cole, um, education specialist at uh, Hope's Place in Ashland, Kentucky. We appreciate him coming on. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back on Greenbow Gathering uh, with Bob Adams. He is uh, right here over the campground of the marina here at Greenbow Lake State Resort Park. First of People's Bank has served customers one at a time since 1932. First of People's Bank, a full service bank with six convenient locations to serve you. Stop by today and take advantage of the many banking opportunities available at First and People's Bank and Trust. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. Hey, welcome back to Greenbow Gathering here at Greenbow Lake State Resort Park. Bobby Allen along with Carrie Lyle. And we'd like to bring on our next guest uh, for today's show, Mr. Bob Adams. Bob, Bob thanks for coming, man. Clyde. Clyde. <laughs> Clyde, uh, tell us a little bit about the boat dock and the marina and the campground. Uh, how many slips you got? How big is the lake? How many campground sites do you have? Just Our lake's 225 acres. Currently in the campground we have 57 uh, developed sites, uh, 22 are full service. And we have seven pool through sites. We also serve the handicap with two handicap sites, one with full service, the other with water and electric. And the prices vary depending on how much service you want. We have 36 primitive sites for 10 campers, things of this nature, and we have nine horse camping sites. Stay pretty busy down there, don't you, Bobby? Packed. <laughs> if they want to reserve a camping site, uh, how do they go about doing that out there at, uh, in the public? Well, uh, the state has, uh, through a Reserve America, you can uh, go online at www.reserveamerica.com and uh, uh, reserve a site for the future. Now, if you're walking, you can walk in directly with us and we'll take the site uh, for you. We do not do reservations uh, at the actual uh, campground because for the protection of the customer and their credit card numbers and things like this, we run them to Reserve America for future sites. Um, Basically, it, uh, it's rather simple. Uh, there's a toll-free number. I have it here. It's 1-888. I think I got it here. 459-7275. 1-888-459-7275. And if you have any trouble online, they'll assist you and walk you through the situation. Okay. Let's talk about your marina down there. You've got, we've got, we've got some pontoon boats and some John boats. Uh, tell us about all the rentals you got. Some we of the things you got. Pontoons, boat. John boats. Uh, we have paddle boats, canoes, and recently we got uh, kayaks. Now these are great kayaks. We're talking about 500 pound limit. It's not. They don't have the little hole you have to climb down in. They're open top, and it takes nothing. We can put. Two 200 pound, 250 pound people in it, and with very little effort, you just skim on the water. They play now very easy. They're great. That's a new addition we have. And we rent those on an hourly, four hours or eight hour basis. All right. So you got some uh, slip areas for uh, folks to rent if they want to keep their pontoon down there? Um. Uh, yeah, so we have 30 some, 30 odd. It can be stretched. It depends. We number about 30. We've got. Uh, Pontoons and they rent 65 a month or 460 a year. That's pretty. That's pretty good price on that. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Uh, we've been told that's the lowest anywhere around here. Then 
but you can launch your own boat at any time. You have to take it out of an, you know, once you're leaving the park. But you can launch your boat for free. Many people have launch fees now. Now, let's say if a camper comes in and has a boat and wants to keep it down there, uh, do you, is there a, do we do we have a fee for that overnight? Yeah, five dollars. That's pretty cheap. Yeah, that's it, five dollars, and uh, we'll give them a place to tie up. They can sit there and uh, come back the next morning at the, out of the campground. And in uh, uh, the campground, our main goal is for, we take it very seriously to serve a customer as well as possible. Not because pressure from you, not because pressure from Frankfurt. We take a responsibility very seriously that this is their vacation or their weekend. And we can run it, but we can have let them have a good time. And that's a big responsibility when you look at it that way. Big responsibility. It's one of the busiest campgrounds in the state park system and uh, the occupancy down there is as high as everyone, all the rest. If we had 50 other camping sites, we'd be full every weekend. No I could run, this past weekend, if I had 15 more pontoons, I could have run. If I had 50 more campsites, I could have run. Uh, There's no problem. Some of the special things, just for one, uh, campers, they get a special rate at the pool, right? Yes. Uh, all they have to do, we give them a car pass. They take their car pass to the community pool. They're in for half price. That's a um, good deal. We pick up, uh, we do a lot of things other campgrounds don't do. We'll make garbage pickup in the morning. All they have to do is set it up by the post. They want wood, they purchase the wood, we deliver it to the site for them. Ice as well, right? And ice, yes sir. You can't beat that front door service. That's, well, it, that's the special things we do to try to make it a good time because uh, like I said, that's a heck of a responsibility when somebody gets away from the stresses of everyday life to get a weekend away. You don't need the hassles, you want to enjoy it. And that's the reason we take it so seriously. For those of you all who have not been to Greenbow Lakes Campground, it is absolutely gorgeous. We've got 25 plus miles of hiking, biking, horseback riding trails that, that you can participate in when you're here. It's 3,300 acres of natural beauty. Um, all types of recreational programming every day done by recreational staff that's done right there in the campground. We've got some great fishing. Bob, let's talk about the fishing. What, you, you, they've been catching anything down there lately? Well, you know, you hear the fish stories. If you want to go by the fish stories, <laughs> I've heard about 150. <laughs> but actual, I don't usually don't repeat those. It's the one I've seen. And I've seen up to 9 to 10, 8 to 9 pound bass just this, this early season already impressive. that they've brought in and we've actually seen them That's impressive so you know that those are some nice catches now according to fish and wildlife where they do the testing and all this there's supposedly state records i've been told by them there are state records yeah. in this lake yeah i've been told the same thing fred Housen, the guys over fish and wildlife in moorhead uh they do a great job of managing the lake force and and uh, we appreciate that a lot. Um, Bob, anything else you'd like to let the folks know out it? I just want people to come and give it a try. We do the best we can, and I want these kayak. I want them to know these kayaks are something fabulous. It's a new item we have. We have uh, seven of them, and uh, if you if you've checked around, you just don't find 500 pound weight limits on these things. Pretty good rate on rental on those too, isn't it? Oh yes, they're turning. People enjoy them. They're, they're really having a good time with those. All right. Bobby, thank you for coming up. We appreciate thank it. Thank you for inviting me. Do a good job. Appreciate man. it. Thank you, man. We'll be right back in a few minutes here on Green Mo Gathering with Bonnie and Shannon Spears. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Greenbow Gathering here at Greenbow Lake State Resort Park. Bobby Allen along with Carrie Lyle. It's time now to welcome our musical guests for today's show, Bonnie and Shannon Spears. Thank you all for coming. It's good to be here. Good to and be here. as local musicians, first of all, give us a little bio where you're from and, and how, you got, uh, how you got the music started. Well, we're just local and uh, I've played most of my life and Bonnie is from New York. And uh, she, I've, uh, she's always said, I don't want to be on stage. That's what you do. I watch you, and then I bought her this thing, and she's fallen in love with it, and she's playing it very well. It's coming That's along neat. great. That's yeah. neat. Well, and we have a lot of fun playing together. Tell us about uh, the song that you're going to sing. We're going to do a, a, a Merle Haggard song today called Mexican Bands, okay. and it kind of features her little instrument here. And okay. I want to dedicate this song to our good friends in Asheville, North Carolina, Jimmy and Helen. Because they are watching in today, and that's awesome. a good thing. Awesome. Oh, no, I can't lie. Take it away. Are we ready? Masabi Chicano, Masabi Espanol, learning as fast as I can. But I love frijoles, tortillas, and tacos, listening to old Mexican bands. Sabe in a lingo, cause I'm just a gringo. I too like to work with my hand. So early when I smoke what I want, listen to a Mexican band. And I love the way in the trumpet, smell of a Mexican. First of People's Bank has served customers one at a time since 1932. First of People's Bank, a full service bank with six convenient locations to serve you. Stop by today and take advantage of the many banking opportunities available at First and People's Bank and Trust, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. And yeah, welcome back to Greenbow Gathering. Uh, Bobby Allen along with Carrie Lyle and, and we want to thank our guests today first and foremost. Uh, we had a great series of guests, Coach T.J. Maynard, uh, Austin Manis and Mac Boggs with Raceland, uh, Raceland Ram football program. Uh, we want to wish them the best of luck this season. Also Mark Cole with Hope's Place, we want to thank him for coming out today. Uh, Bob Adams from the Campground and Marina here at Greenbow Lake State Resort Park and Bonnie and Shannon Spears who did a great job and, and the instrument by the way she was playing is a concertina. So just to throw that out there for everybody, I was curious about what that was. Um, 
I want to thank First and People's Bank, Greenup County Tourism, Green Bay Lake State Resort Park for their support. This is available at greenupbeacon.com. We want to thank Hank Bond for his support coming out here and uh, filming this for us. Here, you got anything? Come on out. We got some good food. Buffets open all weekend. The pool is rocking and the water's right for fishing. So come on out to Greenbow Lake and enjoy. And we'll see you next week, same time, 1030, greenitbeacon.com. Again, you can watch it live or we'll send out links later for the uh, for you to view it after we get done. So thanks to everybody and we'll see you next week.